welcome back to The Missing. My name is Ariane. If you're new here, The Missing is a channel that I created in hopes of helping others find their missing loved ones. I dedicate this channel to my uncle Mark Anthony Mestis, who went missing from New Mexico in 2001, and to this day our family has no answers. If you have any information on Mark Anthony Mestis's whereabouts, please, please comment down below, or as always, you can email lovedonesmissing at gmail.com. We will gladly take any information you have um, on his whereabouts or if you know any information about anybody who does know any information about his whereabouts. We have started a new series in this channel just to kind of break up the monotony and it's called Let's Talk Murder. So today we're going to be doing a Let's Talk Murder video. And this murder, this murder video was posted up yesterday. I apologize that it is a day delayed. I intended on uploading it yesterday. However, um, I did not get around to doing that because it was our youngest son's eighth birthday. So we were busy celebrating him. And today is Monday. My schedule is a little different this week. I was off yesterday and today. Um, I'm also working a different shift this week. So bear with me. Video schedule might be a little bit wonky. Well, I'm in the process of changing this temporary schedule and then hopefully maybe change my schedule permanently. We'll see. Um, I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but I hope it is a wonderful day. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, it's overclassed and gloomy here, so it's a perfect movie day. It's, you know, a lazy pajama day. That's what we're having. So um, buckle up, sit tight, and let's talk some murder today. The story that we're going to be discussing was a requested story, so um, that's why we're doing this one. So, Penny, this one's for you. This is called Hollywood Video Murders. This is a sad case, so if you are triggered by murder, violence, anything of that nature, that's what we're going to be discussing. If this is something you don't like, you'll probably want to click away. The Hollywood Video Murders took place on March 3rd of 1996 by the early morning hours of March 3rd, there would be five people who would be murdered on this day. So we're gonna back up a little bit to March 2nd where you had three employees. You had Zachary Blacklock, you had uh, Pauline McDougal, I believe, and then, or, I'm sorry, George and Pauline McDougal, they were the grandparents to Zachary. Um, they would be involved in this case. Zachary would be closing the score, store and he would be involved in this case um, as one of the victims as well as his grandparents. And then two other employees would also fall victim on this dark day in the early morning hours of March 3rd, 1996. These are, these are the Hollywood video murders. Your victims would be Zachary Blacklock. You would have Joanda Castillo, George and Pauline McDougal, they're again the grandparents of Zachary, and then the last victim, Mulin Dahadi. I'm not sure how to say the last victim's name, so I apologize in advance for saying it wrong, but these would be your five individuals who would fall victim to two evil, callous individuals. So as I said, March 2nd was like any other day. Your three employees would show up to their job at the Hollywood Video Store in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it would be, by all accounts, an uneventful day there at the shop store. Now, when they would close, they would close in the late hours, and they would not get off till about two in the morning. So on this day, Zachary's grandparents would be coming to pick him up at two in the morning from the Hollywood video store. Little did any of these five individuals know that down the street were two people. You had Esther and you had Shane. You had Esther Beckley and Shane Harrison were their names. Now, Esther Beckley was somebody who was out of jail, um, who had been priorly in jail and incarcerated for drug trafficking. 
Then you have Shane Harrison, who had been previously incarcerated for robbery. So you've got two criminals who have a history, who've been in and out of jail, and you would think that at this point in their life, you know, maybe they're over crime, maybe crime is not for them, but that would not be the case. Both of these individuals were actually out on a good behavior release at the time of their crime. So they're down the street from this Hollywood video store and neither one of them just have the good sense to say crime is not where it's at. Instead, they decide, oh, it's gonna be a great idea to go and rob the Hollywood video store down the street. So they devised this plan. They're gonna go in and they're gonna rob the Hollywood video store, right? Because, you know, um, Esther's not into robbery, but she's hooked up with Shane. He is into robbery, so he's got it covered. He kind of knows what to do and how this all works. So she goes along with it. Now, Esther would say that the original plan was for them to rob the store using BB guns, okay? They were not gonna go in there with, with real ammo. They were just gonna go in, scare the employees, and rob the store. Well, what Esther did not know was that Shane decided, no. BB guns weren't going to work in this case. Shane decided to take a shotgun and a semi-automatic pistol in with him. Esther says she didn't know this. So 2 a.m., our three employees are closing up the Hollywood video, getting ready to get off work on March 3rd, 1996. Zachary's grandparents show up because they're picking him up from work. Well, they all show up at the same time as Esther and Shane. So Esther manages to convince the grandparents that, no, you guys can just stay in the car. We'll just wait in the car. You know, Zachary will be out soon. They're just closing up. I know your grandson. He said he didn't want you guys to be cold. Just wait in the car and stay warm. I'll wait with you whatever the case may be. So they're waiting in the car for Zachary to come out of the store and the employees to finish closing up. So while she's convincing them that everything, and I say she, I mean Esther, right? So while Esther's convincing them that everything's okay, they can wait in the car, Zachary will be out shortly, Shane then proceeds to, to go ahead and go on with the crime in the store. So he's gonna go ahead, while Esther's distracting the grandparents, Shane's gonna go in and complete the robbery. The problem is, is that Shane wasn't there to just rob the store. Shane would proceed to usher the three employees to a back room, okay? Where he would then bind them to chairs. So he individually binded each employee to chairs. Can you imagine how absolutely terrifying that would be? You're at work getting ready to go home, somebody shows up, there's the three of you, they've got guns, they're pushing you to the back room, they proceed to tie you to chairs. Where is this going? What's gonna happen? I can't imagine the fear that they must have experienced during this time. It's just crazy to me. So here you have your three employees, you have Zachary, you have um, Jawanda and you have uh, you have Malin, I believe is how you say it. So they're tied to these chairs in the back room. And Shane proceeds to pull out his guns, which were a shotgun and the Tech 9 that he had with him. And he shoots all three of them in the head three times why i don't understand why if you were there to rob them why not just tie them to the chairs rob the store and leave i i may maybe because the grandparents had seen them maybe maybe that's why he decided to get rid of to kill everybody i'm not really sure but he goes and he shoots them three times in the head now esther was outside with the grandparents and she said she they would hear the pops go off in the store while they were waiting and once they heard the gunshots go off, then he, Shane, just becomes running out of the store and he jumps in the vehicle with Esther 
and George and Pauline, the two grandparents that are there waiting for Zachary. The two then kidnap the grandparents who are now missing. Okay, so you've got two kidnapped grandparents. You've got three dead employees at 2 a.m. at the Hollywood Video Store in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Well, around 9 to 9.30 a.m. that morning, other employees would come for their morning shift and they would discover these bodies, okay? So the police now get called and here comes the investigation. So now you've got three, three murdered people shot in the head three times. You have two missing grandparents. So they begin to look for these grandparents. It would be days before they would discover George and Pauline's bodies in the Sandia Mountains, okay? So they were murdered. They were, two were shot callously. So they have been shot multiple times and their bodies dumped and they're left for dead. Well, of course, through the course of in the investigation, it would be revealed that Esther and Shane were the culprits who callously murdered these five individuals. Esther would cut a deal and she would turn state's evidence and she would testify against Shane for to keep her from being um, executed. So she would be convicted and she would be the ones to go on and tell them that they weren't supposed to be using real guns, that she thought he was just going to use a BB gun. He was the one who used real guns. They were only supposed to rob the store. Murder was never part of the plan where that plan took a change she wouldn't know but she would end up being convicted and testifying against shane for a reduced sentence of so that she would not a reduced sentence of i believe it was life in prison so she would not get the death penalty uh and she was convicted in 97. shane would also go on to be convicted in 1997. he however would get consecutive life sentences so he will never see the light of day both individuals are behind bars now why were they not behind bars to begin with because why they were let out on a good behavior release they were let out on a good behavior release and then they went and callously murdered five people. They obviously had no intention of changing their ways or starting, you know, turning a new leaf or starting over. The, the first thing they go to, they get out and they plan a crime and then they not only escalate which i guess is what a lot of criminals do i mean they really took it over the edge they ended up murdering five people neither one of them had ever been convicted of any type of murder charges before but i guess if you're gonna go big you go big or you go home and they did they ended up killing five people shot multiple times for no reason other than being i guess at the wrong place at the wrong time horribly horribly devastating and sad I, I can't imagine what their families went through I can't imagine what the victims went through how terrifying must it have been for the three you know employees and for the two grandparents who were just there to pick up their grandson like any other day how many times you go pick your kid up from school or work or your grandkid or your niece your nephew you're not expecting to get kidnapped shot and left for dead in the Sandia Mountains, but that's exactly what happened. <sighs> Such a sad, sad case. Do you have any more details about this case? Do you, do you know any of the victims? If you did, comment down below. If you have a case you'd like me to cover on Let's Talk Murder or on The Missing, if you have a missing person case, as always, you can email lovedonesmissing at gmail.com. Any feedback or comments are always appreciated, so comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. And I will see you later this week with our next missing person case. Bye-bye.